request discuss any item of concern on the regular agenda of March 15, 2016. Brian. I've got several items here. Uh, on, on the claims list this time, there was uh, a couple of items under capital improvement. One of them was cabinets engineering for professional services of $30,175. <clears throat> And Henson Construction Company Professional Services, sixty-six thousand nine hundred eighty-six dollars. <coughs> I was just curious to what those items were, what those pertain to. I'm thinking Henson's probably for the rides building. <coughs> is that? Oh, Marley, you know what they are? And Cabinets is probably a stormwater deal or something. Chris has got the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the one with Cabinets is for the uh, <coughs> development of the the well field, which is Morales project. Uh, I take that back. That's a lie. It's actually for some work we're doing on the 30-inch water line at Chestnut and Cleveland, all the way back from roughly uh, Wheat Ridge or Imo up through there. We're, we're concerned about the condition of that water line. We've asked them to help us with uh, some plans on how can we find some internal conditions on that. So that's what that one's about. The one for Henson is actually for the ride building, which should be nearing completion and. We'll be opening that sometime in the near future. Okay. Just curious. One, one other item on, on the claims list uh, is the uh, item for the 2014-2015 audit in the amount of $20,000. I'd like to have that item removed from the claims list. Until we get that audit, I don't think we ought to pay them any more money. You know, I was just on the phone with them on Monday, and it's, it's almost done. I, I know we've heard this. <clears throat> Um, the check is in the safe, so we can hold that check. You're, you're exactly right. Well, you can pull I, it off and not approve you know, like it. Like I say, they're, they're almost three months past due, and I, I don't think we'll yes, have to pay them anymore until we get the audit. Don't yes, sir, we that's get fine. in trouble if we're not on time on the audit stuff? I mean, don't they always put a finding in there that we were late or whatever? There, there's going to be three findings this year. There's no finding about the timeliness. <laughs> But there's there's some findings about you. reporting issues and, and uh, it should be on the next study session and you should have it well before <coughs> the next study session. But but commissioner, that's fine. We'll pull it off and not pay. Well, it. you know the, the state does uh, hold our some of our tax revenue until this uh, audit is filed. So you know we, they're denying us access to our funds too because of this. And, and they, they signed the contract that said they were going to have it finished by the first of the year. They ought to make good on that. I sure as hell if I was in wouldn't have the guts to, to build, you know, when I was running this league. But anyway. That's a good point, really, because we were pretty adamant that it had to be done by 1231. Yeah? Yeah, I yes, thought we were, too. As a group. A year ago. Yeah. Well, right. one other item was item 8.1, uh, the $750,000 payment uh, to the event center and convention hall. Is that payment going to postpone any other projects? I mean, do we just have that kind of money laying around? That is not a payment. What that is is raising the budget. And Aaron's going to explain that upstairs. She can go ahead and explain it now. Won't you? It's, it's um, well, we'll just let Aaron explain yeah. it. Um, we are projecting right now that the event center, Spectra, is going to bring in an additional $550,000 in revenue. And so with that comes additional expenses to raise that revenue. And so that combined with the shortfall in hotel motel revenue is why we need to raise this budget by 750. So they're supplying 550 of the 750 and the other 200 is what needs to come from EMA to help offset that hotel tax. There's no other really items within that budget to help make up that deficit. So, but even that, let's just say the loss of that 200,000, you know, out of our uh, funds, uh, is that is that going to postpone or delay some other project that we had planned to uh, accomplish? No, we are projecting to come well within budget on the EMA side of things. Um, there are some things that didn't come through. Um, we had budgeted for some debt payments that we're not going to have to make because of um, things happening in late June with paying off and defeasing a note and bringing on that new note. And so that's really where there's some surplus in EMA to help cover this. Well, there's also year. extra revenue, right? From the landfill fees? There are, but overall revenue is going to come in under because of not having that $3.6 million reimbursement. So revenue is going to come under, but expenses are going to come in even further under. <clears throat> Well, and actually, some has our sales tax revenue has been a little bit less, probably than we projected, hasn't it? Yes, it has. The water revenue and the landfill fees have came in significantly higher than what we did budget for this year, though. So, yeah. <coughs> the hotel motel tax came in through the uh, 
municipal authority? No, it comes in through the the Enid Event Center Fund, Fund 60. Um, their proprietary fund, they have that revenue designated to them. Is that within the Enid Municipal Authority? No, it's its own fund. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's all I had, Mayor. Good point. Anyone else? Item three, CIP update. Chris? Thank you, sir. Apologize, but this is this is one of the main reasons why I stumbled on that previous question is my number one topic here is the Wellfield Improvement. This is a list of the projects that we have going on currently. Uh, the first one up is our Wellfield Improvement Project, and it's hard to read. <laughs> uh, this one is out for bid. Uh, we have an alternate in there to, to put in a... Um, uh, uh, an alternate between 20 and 24 inch. Normally that's a little bit more than what we need. What we're doing this pipeline for is to bring a couple of new wells online, bring them south to the end of the plant. Uh, Morale came up with this uh, really smart idea to plan for the future. And if we, put, if we can afford it and we can put in that size of line in the next budget year or the subsequent budget year, we can connect from where that meets the, the Ames Road north to the, 40 sec the 42 inch line and therefore, we now have a bypass to our 30, old 1950 model 30-inch line going cross country. <clears throat> so in essence, as we bring the, the call uh, water online and we treat all our water in one place on the west side of town, we, we no longer have to mess with that 30-inch line. When it's done, we can deactivate it or save it as a backup. So we're really, I mean, it was really a brilliant idea. Uh, we do have a permit from the county to place that. It's out to bid. Once it gets awarded, we'll bring that to you and we'll get started on putting that in the, in the ground. Uh, this is our call project. We are doing monthly meetings. We had a, a big meeting over, over last week uh, to discuss water treatment regimes. Uh, we pretty much, let's see, we had Bruce and Lewis, myself and Morali with their uh, design team, water design team. Uh, four or five PEs and three or four PhDs talking about all the different methodologies for treating water, surface water, and all the things that impacting integrating that with what we've got now. Uh, we came up with what I believe to be a very good solution. I was very happy with the way the meeting went. It was rather long, but it was very productive, and we'll be bringing that to you in the future. Uh, this is basically providing uh, ADA access routes around the Waller School. It's out for bid, do pre-bid meeting in March, and then award. It'll come back to you for an award. Uh, this is the one that does the, the bridge at St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, we've got two projects that we're trying to keep integrated on this one. One is the re reconstruction of Cherokee Street, and the other one is this bridge structure, box structure. Um, <coughs> those will go out to, uh, to bid later on this month, March. And we still need to, to work on the flood encroachment permit and to do some final coordination with the hospital. They are very much aware of what's coming on. They are very much aware of the impact. <clears throat> but we want to tell them one more time before we actually get started tearing things up. Willow Road, we know about this. We wrote our check. We sent it off. They're expecting to do a pre-bid in April, uh, award in May, start in July. As soon as we find out what their actual release to bid date is, we'll let you know. Uh, 42nd Street, it's under construction. A um, lot going on there. Uh, the drainage uh, structure right there off of 412 on the south side is in place. Curb and gutter on the east side is done. Several pieces of uh, panels of concrete have been laid. Project's going pretty smoothly. Chestnut and Cleveland intersection. Uh, we're in the process of doing our utility relocations and we're getting ready to do right-of-way acquisitions. Uh, our right-of-way letters are ready. Uh, we now have received the uh, appraisals and those will probably go out this week. And then we'll clean up the right-of-way on that. Uh, this is that 30-inch line we talked about earlier. It's given us some, some concern simply because of its age. Uh, this one is the water line on Broadway. It is done. You'll be seeing that next meeting for acceptance. <clears throat> uh, this is the Cherokee Street. Uh, we're also in that. It's going to bid at the same time as the bridge <coughs> structure, if at all possible. Uh, the concern is I've got very limited space for laydown. 
I want to make sure that both contractors, if it awards to two different contractors, integrate at the beginning. And so we can work through that without creating a lot of delays and hassles. Do you think this project can be completed this calendar year? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's all the way through December. I know. It's, taken, it's been awful slow. <clears throat> it's quite a complex problem to solve. Have you looked in the drainage ditch down there? Uh, uh, that box structure is rather large. It's tall. Uh, and a lot of the head walls and side walls on it are very, uh, in very bad shape. And so there's a lot to this one. And then how do we do this, integrate the road, and still not shut the hospital completely down? Well, that's what's that's the great news on this one, Commissioner, is, yeah, it's taken a long time to get here, but now it's close to being awarded, so or yes. it's a bit out, and then it'll be yep. awarded. Yeah, uh, Jamaro's got a few things to run on the street. We need to, we need to do a quick review with EnviroTech on the box, and out they go. Have you coordinated that with the hospital? I'm sure. On several times, several times. But we need to do it one more time so they know what's coming. They've already made some plans on how they're going to be able to access their uh, ambulance entrance and the things that are going to impact them. So, okay. This is landfill. Uh, been awarded. We did pre-construction today. Once we get our permit from DEQ, we'll issue notice to proceed, and they'll press on. Mm, Broadway Trail, as soon as Mara, uh, Jamara gets done with Cherokee, she'll finish this one up and we'll get this one out to bid probably in April is when I'm expecting it to go out. It'll probably be late April. She's, she's been kind of busy. Uh, Oakwood West Detention, we were originally delaying this because uh, at the beginning of last summer, towards the end of last summer, <clears throat> we thought there was an opportunity to kind of consolidate some uh, legal issues and to, gain, and to acquire some property which would improve the efficiency. That's not working out. We're going to go ahead and press and release this for bid and get, get this part of the detention in place and working because we really need to. This one's under construction, be finished by August. Moving right along. <clears throat> Uh, the pump station, uh, this is the one where we asked you to reject the bids two, three meetings ago because we didn't like the way they came in. They were way overpriced. So we'll release that to bid in April. Uh, meter replacement for the pumps, for the pump uh, power, uh, uh, water plants. Excuse me. Uh, the equipment has been acquired. It's on, in, uh, with, once it's delivered, we'll get uh, Bruce and his five, uh, guys to install it. We'll use Luckinville to help make the taps and that'll be done. Water main replacement uh, for the downtown area. We've had uh, two potential applicants come through. Uh, we've not seen an actual request with an application and the necessary engineering, but as soon as we do, we'll, we're ready to move on it. Moore and Van Buren, this is an old one that's been dragging along. Uh, the challenge to it was getting uh, the right of way to, to do this work. It is now uh, on, yeah, it's on contract. Uh, we'll start construction in the, in the near future. Uh, this is an oldie. Uh, this is one of those uh, segments that we have just, uh, just as the sanitary sewer crosses Van, uh, 81 north of Van Buren or north of Garriott. We think we're really close to capacity on these and we really would like to know, but to get the data that we need, we need to have monitors in place during a heavy rain. So we've had a hard time hitting that, those two things. Uh, this is our annual I&I. &I. It'll go out to bid in April. Uh, trail improvement for the Vance. Uh, this one's gone along pretty good. We've made uh, quite a bit of progress. We did a 30% uh, design review uh, we pretty much know what route we're going to do to get from the south side of Meadow Lake where there's the uh, there's two gazebos and two parking parking places and we'll jump off of the south side of Meadow Lake there uh, go down to the the property that is just east of the golf course so they're not out trying to walk in the fairway uh, and then go all the way down to Southgate jump the road and then go up to God did it did it take us 50,000 to figure that out, or what's the, what does the 50,000 get us? The 50,000 get uh, gets us the design on that. Oh, the, the whole design. and then The whole design. 
How do you get from one side of Metal Lake to the other? I mean, part of the reason, and maybe I, my memory is incorrect, but part of the reason that we, the budget item was where it was on this was because we knew it was going to be really complicated to design that one side of Metal Lake to the other. Um, is that not happening? No, that's not really the intent of what I understood our, our marching orders to be. Ours was to let's pick it up from the south side of the Metal Lake get it to Vance, and we'll attack crossing Metal Lake either in the next budget year or yeah, in the future. I, I, I guess I'm remembering wrong. I mean, my memory, well, memory was that what we wanted to accomplish was a design to get from the north side of Metal Lake, where the trail dead ends, to Vance. And that, I mean, designing from the south side of Metal Lake to Vance isn't that complicated. I mean, it's flat and... Relatively, but there, yeah, are, yeah, there it, are several... It could be worse, but... But yes, it from, could be worse. It can always be worse. one side of the pond to the other, I thought it was going to be the complicated bit, which is why we had a higher budget item. And I'm misremembering. Does anybody else remember from like a year ago now? Or Well, you know, my, my complaint about this project when we were talking about it is the fact that it, <coughs> it actually is a trail from Vance to Metal. It's not a trail that connects to the rest of the trail system. Unless we get from one side to the other. Yeah. But, but, it, but it's going to. What our focus was was to solve the south problem first and then get across the wherever somewhere between the spillway and the bridge we know we've got to cross there mm -hmm. um, we spent forty nine thousand five hundred dollars when we solve that we're going to move right into the the connecting part um, i don't know how much we can get it looks like there's still money left in the budget that we can uh, move forward with but i know that's been a challenge for us we talked at several different uh, i think we talked on a couple of occasions because i know we've talked about with odot and not trying to, to to hook a bridge a pedestrian bridge onto the bridge obviously that i don't know where we've gotten on that but that's probably gonna be expensive and time consuming so i'm focused on with chris just find a way to cross that low water low water area cross. even yeah. though you know it's a floodway we've got to work through those issues but that's our intent is to solve the south side and okay. move immediately to getting across and then connecting has anybody looked at cross uh, <clears throat> taking that trail out to Vance along Cleveland, there by the middle. We did look at that as an you option. Don't that, you don't have that big ditch to cross. Well, you still do. There's no pedestrian way to cross the ditch. The problem yeah. is my trail is on the east side of the channel, <clears throat> the core channel. Cleveland's on the north side. That drives people in to cross on that uh, root bridge to get from there to Cleveland. And that creates an issue for me because it's not set up for it. To me, there isn't a big wide drainage system. <clears throat> well, we still have the same issue, Mayor, of crossing the core channel bridge on Roop because Roop. it's on the east side of the bridge. So if we cross there, you're exactly right. We could go down to Cleveland, go down the road. But I think that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. right? We still have the problem of crossing the channel. And, and in the end, I, in the end, we also understood that or it was our interpretation that the will of the council was let's cross in Meadow Lake Park so people can get from one side to the other which is what I understood yeah. the next step was going to be was let's solve that problem in the meantime um, I can get a, a design out uh, if we have uh, the resources available we could start construction on that and that, inter that that's a lot of interest in on the base side of getting that even if it is to the south side of Middle Lake Park, getting that trail out of the base. Mm -hmm. Is this study going to give us an estimate of what the trail itself is going to cost? This will give us an uh, engineer's estimate, all the necessary design uh, material to, to bid this out. And then we can go talk to the Air Force Base and to Mike Cooper and to anybody <coughs> else we can talk to and, and hopefully get some contribution into the cost. Yes, mm -hmm. we've already been talking to the base. They've been integrally involved in these. You've had almost a pre-design meeting and maybe yes, something we did. else on this. And yeah, we've had them at, at a couple of our meetings, design meetings on this park. Great. And they're looking forward to to us having a final design so they can put a gate in the fence for their trail. Awesome. And they'll meet at the fence. I don't think there'll be a problem. Can we rewind just for a minute? Sure. You mentioned that it abuts <coughs> the east side of the golf course. Would you bring up the backup slides, please? <coughs> Okay, here's the route that we've basically uh, settled on. This is the south end of side of Middle Lake. 
if we tried to go down, down here, we have to cross this core channel and then go inside on this property and this property, which is the hospital and the Korean church. So how far <coughs> is the setback from that property line? Uh, we're planning on roughly 30 feet to the center line of the trail. Keeps us out of the trees, keeps the trees as part of a protective shield against golf balls. <laughs> it's important. Aaron, is, that is a duck hook. <laughs> that is a duck hook waiting to have the tea box. I, I would not walk right there. Well, but, um, I've walked it several times. I've never found a golf ball out here in these fields. Uh, if it does look like it's getting to be a problem, it's very easy uh, technically to put up a, a shield fence okay. for this segment yeah. right here. Yeah. We've already looked. We've already. We're already considering that. I was going to suggest that you <coughs> just look at it because it's that could be a problem area. If you're running and don't have any one, you could get knocked out. Quickly. There's a pretty good stand of trees right here, which we are not going to move. No, I agree with that. I've, I've hit those trees a bunch. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, this is you're saying a lot about your golf game. Yeah. So, so let me get. Let, <laughs> let me guess. You hit to this point right here, no, and now you and then right. <laughs> and then you've got an uphill hook that gets you up over the trees. Maybe. <laughs> 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 put a golf club and a golf ball in someone's hand. They'll land. I just <clears> want to make sure they're thinking about it. Cause yes, we are. Be yes, we are. Um, this is land acquisition involved in this. There will be some easements required for these two. Let's see. We have had communication with the, the folks. They said it was okay for us to go in there and do our survey, and they seem to be amenable to uh, easements. <coughs> Clearly, there will be fences involved. <coughs> Morale? Okay. Is the trail 10 foot wide through there? 10 foot wide. <coughs> That's my thought. Wow. That's pretty. It will. Years yeah, ago, looks there, very similar. How well it went to Van Buren and back. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. See that tree line? <laughs> <coughs> this one right here? Oh, you're holding the side? No, no, no. No, this, this one right here? Right there. Golf course, golf course, golf course, golf course, back. Years ago. <coughs> it's okay. Yeah, and I understand your concern with for safety. Uh, we are looking into it. I do know that. You generally only use a row of trees to separate fairways. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, you know, we cross Southgate over here, come down Gaunt, and join up with well, our trail here. You come down, is it Taylor Street? Or Taylor? Or whatever that street is. Yes, uh, Taylor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we go to Southgate. Taylor to Southgate. Cross here, and then come down to the base. Good. It's a fairly good chunk of concrete. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, it, relatively speaking, it's not as complicated as others we've had, but there are going to be some issues with this ditch on this side, mm -hmm. and it's worse on the west side. Oh, it's really <coughs> uh, if you'd uh, get us back, any other questions? Try to. Could you get me back to the other slides? <coughs> no problem. <coughs> okay. Glenwood, it was originally started out as Glenwood Safe Route to School. Uh, there was a lot of complications with getting going down Chestnut. Uh, we've talked to ODOT. They said, yeah, we can use this over at Longfellow. Uh, we can get our money's worth out of this. Uh, we're waiting. They've seen the, the, the plans, and we're waiting for them to give us the approval to release for bid, and then we'll let it out for bid. Entryway signs we talked about last time. Bids are due in in April. North Garland detention. Uh, we're gonna, this is the one that's just north of Randolph, coming off of Garland. We need to do a little bit of digging in there and, and clean up a couple of fences. <coughs> Third and Walnut, just flood protection, 16th and Willow. 
another piece of property that's rather flat and the ditches are filled in and we're trying to figure out how to come up with a design to solve the problem because we have a structure that gets inundated occasionally. Uh, crack seal, <coughs> our standard uh, annual program. Uh, relief, sanitary relief for Hoover splash pad. Uh, this is one where we've had uh, sanitary to sewer come out of a couple of manholes when the splash pad's running. Uh, we'll run, drop a quick relief line to, so that doesn't ever happen again. Uh, the truck eating bridge. Uh, Gerald asked for us to look at this. Uh, we do have a striping plan uh, that we're in building to, to, uh, to stripe the road surface. No trucks, <laughs> don't drive here, that kind of stuff. Um, which is really kind of unfortunate because it's not a truck route. The, the height of the bridge is marked. <laughs> there is yellow flashing lights, and there is there are teeth on the bridge. But one more thing we can do is stripe the road. Can we cut those at the intersection <coughs> of Randolph and 10th? Um, on Randolph, going east and west, we have those... Um, I don't know, they're not speed bumps, but, you know, cut into the... Medians, or...? No, cut into the um, street when you drive over them, you know, the... Oh, those horrible What are noise they called? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Noisemakers. Like, like, I don't know. There's yeah, some term. They put them on the highway, Rumble so you know you yes, Rumble it, strips. <laughs> There's a series of three um, mm -hmm. spaced <clears throat> rumble strips, if that's what they're called. Yeah, that's on, what they're called. Uh, Randolph, can we... I mean, I think they were just cut in with a, the concrete saw. <clears throat> can we cut those in at Maine? <clears throat> Well, I actually, I think we'll find... 100 yards back, the, you know... Cause every morning when I'm on Randolph, it certainly wakes me up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's possible that we can. I really think that, that putting uh, no-truck symbols on the driving surfaces might be a little more effective. How will they see those and they can't see the bridge? Good question. And the flashing <laughs> light. And the flashing light. And the teeth. I'm assuming they're going to be looking at... You can I'm going to be... Hear and feel the, <laughs> I'm going to presume that they're looking at the road while they're driving, at least somewhere along the way. No. <clears throat> but and we thought about putting up bigger lights, <coughs> bigger flashing lights. And maybe the flashing lights aren't big enough, aren't bright enough. <laughs> we, we continue to escalate all the time. So this is another step in the escalation I, I, to try I and... That, I think running that road would be a disaster. I mean, that would bounce the teeth out of everybody and drove over. Um, it's something that we can look at. But right now, I'm going to recommend that we stripe the road put signs on the road surface that says no trucks. <clears throat> I think that whole block going towards the bridge on either side, you should have signs that say, warning, road, road bridge ahead, blah, 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 and then right on the other side say, we told you so. <laughs> <laughs> we, we actually have seen, uh, and Morali put it in a slide presentation, where uh, one of those low-hanging signs between two telephone yeah, poles. that looks yeah. awful. Uh, yes, it does. If you hit this sign, you're going to hit that bridge. Well, that's yeah. a wide road, too. And it works on, like, a little one <laughs> yes. lane. Everybody keeps suggesting that, and it's cute, and it's funny on Facebook and all that, but it's not going to work on that street. Well, it's... <clears throat> it's a very wide street. If all else fails, contact Chick-fil-A's headquarters and ask them how to do it. <laughs> they keep people from <clears throat> ramming into their oak. Their oh, I bet that gets nailed every now and then too. It's a lot narrower <laughs> than that. Bar right across the top of the, the, the and here's the complication with the bar space. is now I'm trying to span basically a four and a half lane road. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a big space. And if I put something in the middle of the road between the lanes, I now have to worry about protecting the public from running <laughs> into that. Kid. Yeah. Engineers can handle that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not sure you want to write the check <laughs> yeah, for, for that. a price. <laughs> Maybe we should put a scoreboard up there, too. <laughs> with enough money and thrust, we can make and a brick bridge. fly. I know. Yeah. Uh, dog park, we're done with it. Um, <coughs> slide park, engineering's done with it. Well, rain's kind of got in their way. Uh, the Chestnut Bridge, uh, Public Works took care of that one. They may have, I think they've got a guardrail or two to put up, but other than that, it's done. Uh, they wanted a, a permit to esca, uh, excavate shale out of north of the airport, and that's done. Uh, the BMX uh, trike or bike park, we're talking about, you know, assisting with the design on, on how to bring a BMX. Um, we've done uh, some pre-design, some initial presentations. Our phase one is complete. We already knew it was a landfill, but now we have uh, specific documentation that can tell us where not to dig and where not to build buildings which is really important. Uh, and, but we're continuing to do requirements definition on this project. Uh, ADA improvements in the various parks. Uh, Haskins, uh, final design 
should be done later this month. And then we have uh, final approval for the location on Glenwood Park. <coughs> the home of courts, yeah, we're done with that. Like option two. <laughs> <laughs> this was a late ad. Um, the box structure over on uh, East Cedar, yeah. uh, the east head wall east has yeah. started to collapse. And so we basically shut this bridge down, uh, shut the road down. We're in the process of doing the engineering to safely reconstruct that side of it while not compromising <coughs> the integrity of that structure. And that's all I got. I have a question. Yes, sir. Go back to the Willow Road widening, please. Back the third slide. Yep. <coughs> Doesn't work with a pointer. Could you go back to slide three? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. There we go. What can I do for you, sir? Bidding me. <laughs> um, as we acquired right of way on the north side of Willow Road, uh, we had one uh, property owner who was very concerned about traffic. And so they specifically asked in their settlement that we build them a noise and safety barrier <coughs> between the roads, the road, the trail, then, there, then a fence, a safety fence. And finding a, a safety fence that's rated for the kind of 45 mile an hour speed limit uh, off the shelf has been kind of a challenge. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking. So basically what we've done is we've hired a local engineering firm to do a cast in place restraint system and then cover it with a verticrete fence so it looks good. Will the city build all that fence along there? Or this is the just at one piece of property. The homeowner going to build the fences all along there? The homeowners where we purchased <coughs> right away from, they were paid for their fences. So they can either put up a fence or not. It's up to them. So it's catch as catch can. It's done. Mm -hmm. done. This it's is done. the only fence that we know will go up. <coughs> yeah, this is the last fence that we have to put up. We've put up two others um, a little bit further towards the east. <coughs> Fortunately, I can't. You can put a barbed wire fence there, or you can put a brick fence there. No, not on this one. No. But not on this particular piece of property. I'm talking about the strip oh. of the railroad track. Kind of yes. Cleveland. Whatever they want. Well, except for barbed wire fences, are no longer allowed under our fencing ordinance. We're going to build a $3 million street and not require what it looks like. We, <laughs> fences that do go up have to comply with our fencing ordinance. but. But those homeowners were paid for their fences. The city paid for that. Um, in, in the acquisition. Yes. In the acquisition, yes. yes. Okay. okay. You mentioned 40 seconds. And this is just maybe food for thought, uh, Gerald. But I went to Tulsa over the weekend. As I left, there was an accident at 54th. And as I came back, there was an accident at 54th. Was this uh, yesterday, that this rollover? This was Sunday and Monday. Okay. So um, I think we need to be noticeably aware that there's more traffic out there. And, and as, um, as Love's opens and Carl's Jr. starts serving breakfast, then, you know, we're going to have problems. There is a stoplight coming at 42nd, and uh, Love's is working on that now. That's, uh, and they're not going to be able to open until that's up. Isn't that right, Chris? That is our current position, yes. Right. <laughs> So that's, I don't know how long it's going to take, but it's, I know they're working on it. Uh, and the concern is uh, we've noticed that there has been a lead time for those particular side of poles, size and reach for those mast poles. And at, at some point they might, you know, if, they, if everything's ready and it's still six weeks before the poles show up, what do you do? <coughs> So, so right now, we plan on having a stoplight up there before it opens. Before it opens, we yes. We recognize there's a lot of congestion there now, and then obviously there's been a couple accidents. That's at 42nd. He's at 54. I was at 54. <laughs> but I've been saying for four years we need one at 54. Right. Doesn't ODOT make that decision, though? 
I mean, that's kind of out of our hands. They participate bit. in it. We've looked at that before. It seems like we've done a study before because that's been asked before. And Robert, do you have the? We looked at it, and I don't believe it justified. According to the study we did at that time, it may have changed now. Was that before FedEx was put in the study? Probably. That'll probably slow down traffic though, in between the point at which they last stopped and then. Yeah, we've asked ODOT to look at it a couple times, but I think it's about two years ago they did a uh, uh, traffic analysis study and looked at the warrants for <coughs> traffic signals, and it, their position was didn't support a traffic signal at that time. And and part of that uh, on signals, when you put in the signals, when you don't, when you have uh, high speed traffic on the road, that you actually can create accidents. So uh, based on the accident counts, the information they had about two years ago, it didn't warrant uh, signals, but we can ask them to. Do another study. What, what we can do, Commissioner, it makes sense that after the stoplight gets put up at 42nd, that maybe we do a study of that again without. Let's do that. And I remember uh, Dan Onasorge approached about reducing the speed limit out there uh, another mile. <laughs> I hate reducing the speed limit. I think it's 45. Everybody going for a long way. Uh, well, you know, we extend out north at 55 miles an hour sure. forever, way sure. further than we need to, and there's a lot more congestion out east. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I, I just think it's probably worthy of some consideration. I want to say it's 45 out there already. And 55? 55. 55. Yeah. And then you get to 54th, I think, okay. and then it goes to 65. I was going to say, this sounds a whole lot no. like no. Goes Rosella. Up. It doesn't back, get to 65. Back to what's on the agenda tonight. It goes down to yeah, 45, yeah. and everybody goes to 75. <laughs> Flashing lights do not work. That whole it area. makes it worse. You've got people driving 45, <clears throat> passing people at 70. Well, I wasn't talking about pass or flashing lights. I, I know that's what we have there now. Talking about reduction. What Aaron's talking about has completely changed in the last 24 months. And it will change some more once these two, Absolutely. once this intersection at 42nd Street gets finished. It's going to have more traffic, much more. It's going to have more traffic, but it's also going to be signalized. So we will study the impact after that light comes in. Probably two years. Because that is a good point. Because you need just to been approved recently. <coughs> At 42nd Street? Uh, no, it's been in the works for a while. I think it's good. Um, I think all along, Love's, as part of the plan, was going to have to do some traffic signals. Now, they may have worked mm -hmm. some things out recently. I don't know. But our engineering office has been in touch with them all, <coughs> all along the way. That's the last piece for them, as far as I know, to get it open. I don't know what else they're still doing inside. They're, they're still doing some work out there on the road and in their building. We can also look at some enforcement out there, some more enforcement of, of the speed but, limit. Yeah, once the 42nd Street gets open, gets finished on both sides uh, and the traffic light gets in and, and the community gets used to that traffic light and then we'll go back and, and we can take a look at the traffic counts and see if ODOT will warrant another light at 54th. There's lots of enforcement there. The Sheriff's Department, the Highway Patrol, the City of Angel. Well, there could never be enough. Enforcement. We've got a revenue shortfall. Here, yeah. So. I haven't seen a lot of enforcement. But a safety issue. Call it little You're right. Right. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of enforcement out there. I have. I have. Yeah, you have enough enforcement. That would slow it down a bit. So that's all I have, unless there's any other questions? Yes. Any questions? Thank you very much. We'll be upstairs at 6 30. Thank you for joining us for the Enid City Commission study session. If you have any questions or comments, visit our website at enid.org.